Now, before we move on to talk about the practicalities of event persistence, we should take a moment to talk about aggregate versioning. We've discussed aggregates as a transactional consistency boundary. The purpose of an aggregate is to raise correct events. We can do that because we have the state from other events that have occurred in the aggregate already. In the example of our order, part of ensuring that we raise a valid order was completed event is ensuring that we have received payments equal to the total of the order. Part of ensuring that we are able to receive payments is an order having been placed and confirmed. We can model this type of sequence as an aggregate and then verify that we've received the right amount of payments by projecting the state of the order into the aggregate. It's because these events are projected into an in-memory state that we can ensure consistency within the aggregate. But without the need to verify these rules, we have no need for an aggregate. Utilizing state to guard the business rules to ensure that we're able to throw the correct events is the most important aspect of the nature of an aggregate. So let's talk a little bit about how aggregate versioning can help us to ensure this goal of consistency. Now, versions are sequential identifiers for a single configuration of state. Every time our state changes, it gets a new version. Let's look at two examples. In one example, every time the state is updated, in other words, every time an event is raised, then the version of the aggregate increments. In the other example, as we apply events, the version changes to a unique identifier. In each example, we're still able to identify a current point of state. However, in the sequential example, we have a few benefits. For one, we know the previous version precisely. Additionally, we know what the next version will be. It's this sequential nature that gives us our primary benefit. Let's look at a new example. In this case, we have a generic aggregate. As each event is raised, the aggregate's version updates. However, all of a sudden, two of our employees have intentions for the one aggregate at the same time. In the order example, maybe two of them are interacting with it to mark payments of having been received or something along those lines. The aggregate gets hydrated with the previous events for both cases simultaneously. So we have two different employees, each trying to interact with the same aggregate. As each of their use cases is executed, the events for their intentions are raised into their respective aggregate instance. These are different events that change the state of the aggregate in different ways. These events may even be fundamentally incompatible with one another. Every time a domain event is applied to our aggregate, its version increases. When we store the event, both the aggregate ID and the aggregate version can be stored along with it as additional data. However, before it's stored, we can check the event store to see if the aggregate version is what we expect. If it's not, we can choose to not commit this transaction. In this way, one of the two aggregate state changes that occurred will be rejected. In many cases, this is enough, problem solved. One operation fails, the human receives an error, and then they try to make the change again, or they look at the new updated state and say, oh, we're out of inventory all of a sudden. But what if you chose to automate this process? If we take the losing change and increment the aggregate version accordingly, then we'll be able to store the events. However, the net effect is that we are now storing a new event that was never properly vetted by our aggregate's business rules. So instead of just incrementing our event, let's go back through the entire validation process by refiring the command that failed. So our system goes back through and re-triggers the intent that will hopefully lead to the event being successfully raised. The business rules are guarded. And then if we're successful, we raise the event and store it, and it will have the new aggregate version that indeed we are expecting. This is one way that aggregate version can be used to prevent some invalid states. Another might be to target a specific version of an aggregate with a command. If, after rebuilding the aggregate state from the event store, it's at a different version than we expected, we can fail and update the UI accordingly. On top of all of that, aggregate versioning can be a powerful diagnostics tool. It can be useful for understanding your system and debugging. 